removing Eldritch Blast. Heresy! Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade have been removed from the Conjure Blitz. Eldritch Overflow. It actually turns out fine in the end. The homebrewing community that aim at balancing D&D 5e is vast and there are always people that are smarter than me and having more experience with the system than me. Thus, a good balancing homebrew may have already been written by someone else. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Warlock Plus homebrew from Easy, but only the part where it's most innovative and essential to fixing the Warlock. Then, I'll offer my opinion, what I like, what I don't like, whether the homebrew successfully fixed the Warlock, are there any problems or potential abuse cases. And at the end, I'll also offer my slightly tricked version of this homebrew so it's easier and simpler to adopt into a casual playing table. Let's get into it. So I came across this Warlock homebrew recently and I gotta say, I'm amazed by how well written and well thought out it is. Now the main purpose of this homebrew, I think the author put it very well. Why are you reworking Warlock? Here's the author respond. Warlock for me has always been a bit of a problem child. It is an extremely potent multi-class dip, allowing any character the equivalent of full martial damage progression with just two levels. Essentially taking the Eldritch Blast cantrip and Agonizing Blast invocation at level 2. With this combination, any character can make scaling quote-unquote extra attack at 5th level, 11th level, and 17th level, dealing a d10 plus their charisma modifier every hit. At the same time, Eldritch Blast is very one-note. The class offers what seems to be a traditional martial option in Pact of the Blade, but make sure it remains worse than Eldritch Blast at near about every stage of the game. This is also my problem with the Warlock. They are all about Eldritch Blast. Don't get me wrong, Eldritch Blast is a powerful tool and there are a lot of invocations that back Eldritch Blast up. But it just seems one-dimensional. We are playing a full spellcaster with access to 6, 7, 8 and 9 level spells, yet we overly rely on one single country. Let's continue with Easy's Warlock Plus. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, I am only trying to take what Warlock already has and make it feel better. To that end, Warlock Plus does the following removes Eldritch Blast and Agonizing Blast. <gasps> Joke's getting old, ain't it? I actually agree with this change. And replace them with a base class feature called Eldritch Overflow. Eldritch Overflow is a feature that allows cantrips to scale like the rock sneak attack. You can now use any cantrip and have its damage remain relevant as you gain levels. Hey, just want to jump in real quick and make this very clear. I think the intention of the author is, since Eldritch Blast only exists on the Warlock spell list, and now that we remove Eldritch Blast from the Warlock spell list, it is removed from the entire game of D&D 5e. Because if the Eldritch Blast cantrip still exists somewhere in the limbo of spells in D&D 5e, then the Pact of the Tome Warlock can just pick that right back up. So with that said, I think the direction of Eldritch Overflow is the right direction to go. As we will see in a bit, Eldritch Overflow scaling is tied to the Warlock's level. So this addresses both of the problems we've just discussed. The problem of the two-level multi-class dip and the problem of Eldritch Blast overshadows most other things that the Warlock can do without expanding heavy resources. Spellcasting changes, some of these are relevant. The Blade Contrips, Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade have been removed from the Contrip list. <gasps> Fragnard, the Blade Contrips are only removed from the Warlock spell list. Because they still exist on other class spell lists, they are still in the game. They don't match well with the Warlock split sensibilities and the new mechanics put forth in the class. They were originally a workaround for unsatisfactory gestures, but that shouldn't be an issue for Warlock anymore. There's actually one more reason that we'll see later on. Eldritch Overflow, the newly added feature, is a feature that boosts the damage of Warlock's counter. Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade would benefit too much from this and would render Pact of the Blade irrelevant. And this sentence I cannot agree more with. These blade cantrips are essentially a workaround for unsatisfactory gestures. I have a problem with both of those cantrips. They are too easy of a pickup for many multi-class builds, so they are not missing out on the power spike at 5th level, 11th level, and 17th level. Even when those multi-class builds may not have extra attack or have a very late extra attack into their career, it's also rivaling to extra attack damage, which I think a cantrip should not be. And gonna publish a video fixing them soon. And some more spellcasting changes. The link to the document is in the comments and in the doobly doo. Wow, that word is a tongue twister. How does Matt Coville say that so casually and so often? Doobly doo, doobly doo. Yeah. So far, we've excluded Eldritch Blast from the Warlock class and therefore from the whole game. 
We've also excluded the blade cantrips, booming blade and green flame blade from wall of glass. Here's that famous feature that's been mentioned at the very beginning of this document, Eldritch Overflow. The feature that's supposed to make Warlock still at the same power level as Eldritch Blasting with Agonizing Blast like before. But it also has to discourage the 2 level dip and it has to work with any cantrips, allowing us to pick our own flavorful cantrips for our Warlocks. That's a big task and a lot of expectation for one feature. Let's see how the feature does. Eldritch Overflow at second level, your patron has made you a battery of magic power. You have a magical reserve of power called your Eldritch Overflow. You can only use your Eldritch Overflow once each turn. When a creature takes damage from one of your Warlock cantrips as a result of being hit by a spell attack or failing a saving throw, you can use your Overflow to deal an additional 1d8 damage to it. The amount of extra damage increases to 2d8 at 5th level, 3d8 at 8th level, 4d8, 11th, 5d8, 14th, 6d8 at 17th level. If the country damages 2 or more creatures, you can distribute these dice among them however you wish. Here's a side note from me on why Eldritch Blast is too good with Eldritch Overflow and removing Eldritch Blast is the right direction. I previously also made a Warlock Homebrew and I made a similar once per turn ability to boost the damage of all Warlock cantrips. But here's the problem, because Eldritch Blast can shoot more beams at higher level, Warlock with Eldritch Blast at higher level could attack more and have more chance to apply that extra damage, making Eldritch Blast still better than other cantrips and therefore my Homebrew failed at giving the Warlock more diverse cantrip choices. So I agree with the decision to remove Eldritch Blast here. It works. Drastic. But works. Also, Pact of the Blade. At 3rd level, there's a slight change. The attacks you make with your Pact Weapon can use your Charisma modifier instead of Strength or Dexterity modifier for its attack and damage rolls. Well, this is very similar to my Hex Blade and Pact of the Blade homebrew. I guess other people feel the same about how strong the Hex Blade is for multi classing and how weak Pact of the Blade is. Izzy also gives Pact of the Blade proficiency with medium armor. Just armor though, not a shield. I don't give Pact of the Blade proficiency with medium armor in my own homebrew. I'll give this some thought. Easy also added, whenever you hit a creature with an attack using your packed weapon as part of the attack action or a reaction, you can use your Eldritch Overflow to make the attack deal additional damage equal to your Eldritch Overflow dice. Let's go on with the Q&A. Why did you decide to use a feature like Eldritch Overflow? Couldn't you achieve something similar just by making Eldritch Blast a class feature? Or potentially, but my goal with Overflow was to do more than just make Eldritch Blast harder to mold the class for. By providing a universally applicable scaling modifier to the base class of Warlock, you provide a way for all Warlocks to scale regardless of what modular options you pick. Plus, it encourages you to pick your own core cantrips rather than having them dictated for you. This also helps Pact of the Tome stand out a bit since the cantrip choices actually can make a difference in combat. I agree with this. Isn't an additional 68 at will damage too strong? That's 10 d8 damage every turn with reduced play. Simply put, it is a lot of damage. However, the average damage of a full Eldritch Blast, 40 10 plus 4 times Charisma, is 42, and the average damage of 10 d8 is 45. In essence, I switched to Warlock from operating on a fighter scaling to a rock scaling. PHB Warlocks also have the option of running with the Hex spell, which can last an entire adventuring day. In exchange for the loss in the spell slot efficiency, they get new and buffed invocation, as well as the increased country variety I already mentioned. Here's my own damage calculation. With Eldritch Overflow feature, all the cantrips from D8 damage die to D12 damage die do more damage than Eldritch Blast Agonizing Blast with Thou Hex, and they all do less damage than Eldritch Blast Agonizing Blast with Hex. So I think this is a fine trade-off. On the one hand, the Warlock can no longer boost their damage to the same height before with Hex. On the other hand, the Warlock can always do a little bit more damage than before without having to concentrate, leaving the concentration free onto other spells. Let's look at the fine wording of Eldritch Overflow here. Time for nitpicking! The damage can be dealt once each turn, quite similar to the Rock Sneak attack. So this means if we somehow can cast a cantrip on a different turn, say as a reaction, maybe we have Warcaster. That would benefit from Eldritch Overflow. And also similar to a rock, if the Warlock Plus can somehow get advantage on their only cantrip attack roll on a turn to deliver that Eldritch Overflow damage, 
or similarly in this case, if the Warlock Plus can give the enemy disadvantage on their cantrip saving throw, then the Warlock Plus damage output will be multiplied. So I have a minor problem with that, because a Goblin player race can hide as a bonus action. So a Goblin Warlock Plus could potentially hide as a bonus action, giving themselves advantage on their only cantrip attack roll every turn, boosting the damage quite a bit. Meanwhile, the original Goblin Warlock would only be able to gain advantage on the first Eldritch Blast beam. The Mind Sliver cantrip will also be better with a Warlock Plus because if we cast Mind Sliver consecutively, giving the enemy minus 1d4 on their saving throw, then the next Mind Sliver is more likely to land. Normally, a Mind Sliver doesn't do that much damage for it to matter, but with the Warlock Plus Eldritch Overflow, that would make a difference to our Mind Sliver damage output. I've punched the number in, and it turns out that Mind Sliver with Eldritch Overflow rivals the damage of a d8 cantrip with Eldritch Overflow. Well, maybe the Mind Sliver case is fine, because normally it is a situational cantrip. The Warlock Plus can just use it as a primary damaging cantrip too. Alright, moving on to the next detail of Eldritch Overflow. How about the specific wording here? When a creature takes damage from one of your Warlock cantrips as a result of being hit by a spell attack or failing a saving throw, that seems like a weird sentence, but I think all the words here are intentional. When a creature takes damage from one of your Warlock cantrips, so Eldritch Blast is a goner not even in the game anymore. Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade also gone, not on the Warlock spell list anymore. Immediately after I read this, a bright idea came to my mind. Well, what if I take Pact of the Tome and retake the Green Flame Blade or Booming Blade cantrip and have that onto my Warlock spell list? Aha! Uh -huh. Well, they would actually, specifically, still not work with Eldritch Overflow as a result of being hit by a spell attack or failing a saving throw. Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade requires a weapon attack, so they do not qualify. Once again, I believe the reason the author of this document, Easy, goes through such length to prevent Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade from working with Eldritch Overflow is because both those cantrips already have really good damage. Adding Eldritch Overflow on top of that would make it too good. And because the Eldritch Overflow works once each turn, the Booming Blade deals a bit more damage when a creature moves, potentially on its own turn, then it would take Eldritch Overflow damage again, making the cantrip deals way over the top damage. Even the wording in Pact of the Blade prevents Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade. Here, it says, Whenever you hit a creature with an attack using your Pact Weapon as part of the attack action or a reaction, Oh crap, this wording has problem. I should ask Easy if this is intentional or not. Because the part about attack action is nice, it's good. Casting Booming Blade or Green Flame Blade is considered casting a spell and not taking the attack action. But using your pack weapon as part of a reaction is not good. Because Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade can be cast as a reaction when we have Warcaster. And therefore, hitting a creature with an attack using the pack weapon as part of the reaction. I'm gonna note that down real quick. Tell Easy that his homebrew sucks! No, sorry. Wordings in his homebrew needs change. Hey, Tian for the future here. I just got back from talking to Easy. Such a nice guy. Nerdy too. But that's to be expected, right? He wrote this whole document. So his original intention is to make Pactable Blade not work with Booming Blade or Green Flame Blade at all. But coming up with a wording for that is too hard. So he's gonna live with this wording for now until he thinks of something better. So that's another minor problem I have with this homebrew. It has to work around Green Flame Blade and Booming Blade too much, to a varying level of success. I think those two Blade cantrips are actually more of a problematic player options, so we should tackle the problem at the root. I plan to do something with the Blade cantrips or cantrips in general sometime soon. I already have some ideas down, just want to go over it with some people to see if they really work as intended or not. Subscribe to be notified when that video comes out. Okay, I believe that's the entirety of Eldritch Overflow. This homebrew goes on to talk in depth about the Warlock subclass, the Warlock spells, and the Warlock invocation. But I think for the purpose of this video, we only look at invocations for now. Specifically, those invocations that were working only with Eldritch Blast. I believe Easy removed most of those Eldritch Blast only invocation, and there's one that he still kept. Eldritch Spear, previously only worked with Eldritch Blast. Now, when you cast a Warlock Cantrip that does not have a range of touch, its range is 300 feet. That seems a little bit problematic. Can I cast Thunderclap with the range of 300 feet? That's gonna encompass several houses or part of an army. I don't think that's intended. Can I cast Thorn with a range of 300 feet? 
Well, that doesn't seem as good as Thunderclap, but still significantly better. Maybe that's intended? And in place of Eldritch Blast Focus Invocation like before, Easy decided to add Eldritch Overflow Focus Invocation. Things like all the Overflow Shockwave where the Warlock can use Eldritch Overflow to deal damage in a cone behind the target instead. Pretty cool. Auto Overflow Beam to make a beam instead of attacking. Some of the cool things like using Eldritch Overflow to cast a cantrip again as a bonus action. Or overpowering a counter where the Warlock can use Eldritch Overflow to force a creature to make a strength save and push it 10 feet away. I think this is kind of a replacement for Repelling Blast. Not really the same, but similar. But I have to say, why these are all cool and flavorful? They are not simple to adopt as a homebrew. I think simplicity is something usually underrated in homebrew fixing an official option. Because if something is too far away from the source material, fewer people will take the time to read through it. Fewer will memorize it or tell their friends about it or tell their DMs about it. And fewer still will actually play that homebrew. So here's my proposal for a more simple version of Warlock Plus if you want to try it out without much complication. Basically, still remove Eldritch Blast, Green Flame Blade, and Booming Blade. Still add Eldritch Overflow and make the change to Pact of the Blade. But we don't need any new invocation at all. And for the original invocation that focuses on Eldritch Blast, there are 5 of them. Here are my simple recommendations. Agonizing Blast, remove. Eldritch Spear, remove. Grasp of Hadar now reads. When a creature takes your Eldritch Overflow damage, you can move that creature in a straight line 10 feet closer to yourself. Once you use this feature, you cannot do so again until the start of your next turn. Lands of Lethargy, similar wording, but instead of pulling a creature to us, we're gonna reduce that creature's speed by 10 feet until the end of our next turn. Repelling Blast, almost the same wording. We push the creature away, but we can use this more than once per round. That's because the original Repelling Blast also doesn't have the once per round limitation, unlike the other two invocations. And that's it, the more simple version of the Warlock Plus if you want to try the idea out in your game. In summary, I'm about 85% happy with Easy's Warlock Plus. This homebrew has succeeded at its goals. Give the Warlock more diverse country choices, make Pact of the Blade feel less bad, and remove the problematic 2 level dip. The main idea for Eldritch Overflow is awesome. It just has some weirdly specific wording to prevent Green Flame Blade and Booming Blade from working, and then a hiccup <laughs> still slips through the crack. There could be some interactions that are quite good, like if the Warlock can apply advantage on the country attack roll or apply disadvantage on the enemy's stepping throw against their country, but they are likely just good, not broken. I could see many Warlock Plus tries to get into melee with a Warcaster feat to try and trigger a reaction country for more Eldritch Overflow damage, but that has the obvious risk of putting themselves in danger with a D8 hit dice and not very high AC. If you want to read more of this document and marinate it for yourself, or playtest it, or playtest my version, then all the good stuff, all the links are in the doobly doo and the comments below. Watch this video where above another gish, the Vilebard, I give them a musical shield and a harmonious attack. I'm serious. Meanwhile, I'm gonna work on that country video, coming out soon. Do you know that there's a red button and a bell button that lets you know exactly when that video comes out? Crazy, right? Yeah, click that.